Hey, my friends, welcome back. It's Biggs. Thank you kindly for stopping by. Now, today, I actually spent a lot of time over at my dear friend's Spencer Jack's warehouse, the aficionados. You guys have already seen the tour of his place. It's over the top. But in my tour there, Spencer Jack has been instrumental in bringing some new lines to Canada that either have not been in Canada for a very long time or have never been to Canada before. And those lines are both originating out of Germany. Now, in perusing through that selection of products, there's some insanely cool products there that I thought that you guys needed to see. Maybe we should talk about them a little bit. Maybe just give you an introduction to them. So today, I thought it'd be kind of cool if I got, kind of went and took a sampling of five or six products. I'm going to bring them to you guys today. So let's take a peek. Love just sitting here watching the fish swim around. This is the Congo tank, and this is those really, really unique, cool Congo tetras I got. Not the normal Congo tetra, Phenacogrammus interruptus, that everybody's used to seeing in the pet trade. This one, these ones are wild caught. It's an entirely different species, and they are absolutely stunning. When they come by and those males shimmer with that little blue, they're absolutely mesmerizing. Look at that guy. He's just incredible. But that's not the focus of today's video. Today I wanted to show you guys, introduce you to some of these cool new products. Now if you've already seen these products, maybe you use these products already, I don't really know. But I, when I was just kind of looking around, I'm not even going to discuss price points and stuff because some of the products, they're going to be different depending on where you are in the world. If you're in Europe, this is probably maybe the standard you use this all the time. If you're in the States, they haven't really made much of a stronghold in the States yet. However, a lot of the English packaging, or I'm sorry, all the English packaging, lists the American uh, U.S. office or North American office as uh, somewhere in PA. So we'll talk about that. But some of the products I wanted to bring in, I brought some products home. I stuffed them in a bag and said, I'm stealing some of these things. I think these are just things I wanted to show people and kind of talk about. So we'll start down on more of the economy end. This one here. This one's from a company called JBL. It's one of the big companies. There's two monster companies for aquatics in, in, in Germany, one being JBL. And basically this is a, an aquarium thermometer. It's a digiscan. So it takes that, that little old school stick-on thermometer that you used to use that you see everywhere in the pet industry. And basically it's got a sensor on the back of the unit that attaches directly to the glass and then it reads it out and gives it in a digital format. And these are super, super economical. So it's a super, super cool idea. And then they have one more kind of an upgrade from that. And that's this one here. And honestly, I couldn't even tell you what the difference is. This one has a preset alarm below 18 degrees and above 28 degrees. So you never put this one in the water. So this one's actually cheaper than this one, or I'm sorry, more expensive than this one because it has that feature. So it gives you an alarm that if there's any issues in regards to water temperature. But they both have that exact same feature on the back where they attach directly to the tank. And you can see that feature in the middle picture there where they attach and it basically reads the water temperature through the glass. Same as the little liquid crystal ones that we've seen from years and years and years. But I thought these were really, really cool and very economical. The second one I saw was, this is a product from a company called Sarah. And the rest of the products I have here today are all from that other company, Sarah. And they are the other big monster in Germany as well. If you ever had the chance or the opportunity to go to Europe to attend one of the industry trade shows, the biggest one in the world is in Germany. It's called Interzoo, and it's every second year. And it's over the top for aquatics. And one of the biggest companies, as I mentioned, is Sarah. Now, Sarah produces this line of Spirorax. There's several different SKUs of tips of Spirowax, and basically they are biological media that you add to your canister filters, your hang on the back filters, you can put them in box filters, whatever you want. They're an extremely porous media that absorbs all sorts of products. They're great for biological. Now the only difference with this particular one is this one is inoculated with bacterial strains that are shelf stable. So if you're setting up a new aquarium, this one is an ideal product to get you over that hump while cycling your aquarium. Super, super, super cool product. Spirowax, and this is the biofilter media. This one's the bioactive. Absolutely, absolutely cool, cool stuff to see. And it's very, very long-term use biomedia. Next up is this item here. This is the Sarah Precision, and this is their brine shrimp hatchery. 
fairly economical. It's nothing, and they're not inventing a new wheel or anything here. I've seen lots of different types of brine shrimp hatcheries. If you're a hardcore aquarist like I am for many, many years, you've probably made your own brine shrimp hatcheries. But this one's taken all the trouble out of doing it, made it very, very simple. The air is going in through the top. That's going to cause the, pro the, the reduce the chance. They've got a check valve. Uh, check valve goes in line, so basically you provide the bottle. It's got all the other ingredients inside here. Yeah, it's got everything you want. Air load. It's even got a measuring scoop and everything like that for doing your salt and doing your brine shrimp. It's got full pictograph uh, instructions on the back, and it's very, very economical. At least here in Canada, we bring it in directly from Europe, and uh, it's very, very nice. But it's nice to see an affordable easy to use, simple to understand, good instructions, quality made brine shrimp hatchery. And to go along with it, already pre-measured out brine shrimp eggs and salt, all ready to go. And I think this sells here, I think this sells for about two or three dollars, ready to go for an entire batch. Now most of us have seen that are large breeders, we always used to buy it by those big one pound cans and the price kept going up and up and up and up and up and now they're borderline unaffordable by most people but you still want to offer the, the every once in a while you want to offer that occasional live food source. This is awesome and easy to do and if you're, if you're local to Canada, you can buy these from aficionados in Winnipeg, perfect time for the Christmas season. <laughs> <laughs> so shameless plug for them there, but it's a great, great product. It's economical, it's easy to access, and it's pretty dummy proof when they've gone and figured absolutely everything out for you. Now the last two items I have that I really wanted to showcase today, and I gotta be truthful, these items have been sitting in a bag on my desk probably for a month and a half because I totally forgot that they were here. If anything goes in a bag and gets put off to the side, it may as well be not on my world. It's just gone. So I apologize that I wanted to show these a little bit earlier. If you're in Canada and you buy from aficionados, you've had access to these products for two or three months now. But uh, I just thought some of these products are really, really cool and they needed to be seen by you guys. Now the first one is a catfish pellet, and it's a catfish algae disc. No big difference, right? Everybody says, oh, everybody's got an algae disc. Yeah, but this was the catfish double XL. <laughs> and what they mean by double XL, these guys took it serious. Now, really, really cool is Sarah and all the manufacturers, pretty much all the manufacturers of almost any goods in Europe, are extremely conscious about the ingredients used, not only in the products, but also in the, in the integrity of the actual containers and stuff. They all have to be biodegradable, use recyclable materials. They've actually thought almost everything possibly through. In the other line, JBL, they even have some of the foods where you buy the container and then you could buy a replacement insert for the container of just the food in a lighter, uh, more uh, environmentally uh, safe uh, type of reusable plastic. You can just, it's much, much less waste. This little uh, film that's on the top, you can't see it, but it's clear. Look at the size of those monster pellets. And this, this plastic film is actually UV stable. So you don't have anything that's gonna be sitting, you know, sometimes you go into a pet shop and they're brightly lit and they're using UV bulbs for reptiles or plants or terrariums or whatever, or there's a big giant window and often seeing products getting bleached out. Well, air and light are bad, bad, bad for when it comes to the integrity of fish foods. And this little seal is UV stable. But look at the size of those monsters. If you're in Canada, we would call that the size of a loony, <laughs> which is our $1 coin. But these things are probably about a quarter inch thick. I'm not gonna open it because it's not my product. I just borrowed it. Normally I'd open up and I'd feed it to show you guys. But some of the really, really cool features about the European products is no additives, nothing unnatural, they're 100% natural, no dyes of any kind whatsoever in any of their products. So a lot of their foods may look a little bit to the, if we humanize things, we kind of look at it and go, oh, it looks kind of bland and stuff like that. Well, the green in this one is 100% naturally derived from spirulina. So when we look at the actual ingredients uh, in here, the first three ingredients are fish meal, spirulina, and sea algae. And they account for 19% and 15%, so it's, it's a large percentage. 37% protein, 7.6% fat, 6.3% fiber. This is a really, really well thought out integrity product. And if that's not enough, but wait, there's more. <laughs> you guys are waiting for it. But uh, the pellets themselves, they, this is one of those companies that created those original pellets that stick to the glass and they've got a slight little concave to them and stuff. These giant algae discs do that as well. So you can toss them in the tank and your fish can eat them. If you've got a monster catfish, this can go directly to the fish because the protein level's high enough. Granted, that protein is amalgamated between uh, 
uh, meat-based protein sources and vegetable-based protein sources. So it's not quite a true number for protein if you're looking at something that is a devout predatory catfish that only eats meat. But uh, it's still a very, very well-balanced food. But you can take that pellet, take it right down in the tank, and just lightly push it against the glass, and it'll sit there until the pellet's consumed. Very, very cool, very, very unique food. And I think something in that size frame is something that has been missing in the pet industry for decades. So very, very cool to see this one. Hopefully you're as excited as me. I don't even keep catfish right now, and I'm excited about it. The last one is probably the most unique food I've seen in years. And I'm like, who's this marketed to? And I'm <laughs> but when you read it, you read the ingredients, and we'll talk about it briefly here, is this one here, you'll understand. This one is Sarah Sturgeon pellets. Now sturgeon are very, very devout predators, or not predators, sorry, they're omnivores, but their main diet is going to be insects, clams, larvae, worms, that sort of stuff that's gonna be on the bottom of a river. Again, the pellet size is a good size for feeding almost all tropical fish. Again, that nice clear, but UV stable thing, so you can see the food itself. Even though sturgeon can get really, really big, uh, they, they still are very, very efficient at processing food. They still want it in a smaller size. And that was the one question I have. Both this one and this one, and almost all foods available by Sarah or JBL, and JBL foods we'll talk about down the road in another video, but all of them come in small little containers that you'd see in pet size all the way up to this, and then they go all the way up into buckets. Like they go buckets almost the size of a five gallon pail for some of them. They're just monster sizes. So you or I, those giant fish breeders, they have these giant fish rooms with lots and lots of tanks. It's more economical to buy it in that large size as long as we can keep the food fresh. Okay, looking at this one here. Uh, so Sarah Sturgeon pellets is a, a staple food. They call it nature, it means their nature line is 100% natural without dyes or preserves for smaller sturgeons up to 16 inches in size. The granules are extremely stable and water sink down quickly and do not cloud the water. This allows the bottom oriented sturgeon to eat appropriately. The high quality nutritious ingredients and easily digestible aquatic protein, omega fatty acids, minerals and vitamins support balanced growth. Now what's on the food here? Fish meal is the number one ingredient uh, and we're looking at 48% protein. Absolutely awesome. Now the other thing that they have in this lineup is they actually make a pellet that's this size in this formula and they call it sturgeon chips nature. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it on the bottom there, the little pictogram, that's the other food that's available for feeding sturgeon. But how many of you guys keep sturgeon? Probably a very, very small amount. Maybe none of you have ever kept a sturgeon or anything before. However, I've taught like at the warehouse, at Spencer's Warehouse, this is probably the most food dense, uh, the most dense food or nutrition packed protein food that he sells short of going to frozen food. And the one thing about this that he uses for is newly imported predators. Things like pike cichlids that are notoriously challenging. Big pike cichlids, when you import them, are notoriously challenging getting off of anything other than live based foods. This is the food that he uses almost exclusively for getting any of those picky feeders off and eating something dry right away. So if you're buying any of these products, if you've got these products available, I encourage you to give them a try. They're all, all European made. They're held to a higher standard than anything made in North America. And I think they're absolutely unique and I think they're awesome. I think they're worth giving a try. So hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did like that, give me some feedback. Let me know in the comments. Maybe there's a product that you guys want to really, really see or know something more about. Biggs is totally into going into a deep dive on any product that you want, breaking down the nutritional panels, anything that you want to talk about, I'm there for you. I've been working in this industry, in the pet industry, primarily fish, for the bulk of my life. So if there's something I can help you with, I'm here to help. So with that, my friends, we'll see you next time. Take care.